and social structures. So moving on to um, desimplifying anti-racism. So I will go back to my, um, my narrative. Okay, so um, two days later, um, if you remember my narrative about um, the ARA um, conference in Vancouver in 2012, right? Okay, so um, two days later at the conference, I co-presented our paper analyzing the discourse of web websites and media reports on excluding Mandarin-speaking English language learners from a new uh, Mandarin immersion program at the public elementary school in Vancouver. In the paper, we pointed out the justification of the ex exclusion uh, was based on the assumption that parents of Mandarin-speaking children, that is, uh, recent immigrants from China, um, were more concerned about their children's English language development. We argue that this exclusionary line of reasoning resonated with the early 20th century educational policy in British Columbia, which um, excluded Chinese students from public education um, due to the um, overcrowdedness um, that I just mentioned. Um, the, ex um, and the exclusion was justified on the ground that um, they lacked English proficiency and um, therefore they were not ready for public education, but in reality, it was based on race. Incidentally, this discourse uh, overlaps with the 1998 UNS initiative, which terminated bilingual education for mainly Latino immigrant students in California. In its ostensibly well-intentioned gesture of speaking for the other, that um, immigrants want to learn English, not their uh, native language. Jane Hill argues that this discourse, which appears to be a, reason, a reaction against language panic, is actually about race. These exclusionary um, policies uh, prioritize um, acquiring white settlers' language at the cost of maintaining heritage language and culture. In our presentation, we drew on Franz Fanon to argue that speaking white people's language in colonial power structure might make some, if not all, non-white people psychologically become whiter. Um, perpetuating the supremacy of whiteness, which parallels English speakerness. This was because some of the parents, um, as I mentioned, advocated who um, um, parent advocates um, who argued against enrolling um, Chinese-speaking immigrant students were ethnic Chinese. As a theoretical background, we emphasize that racism should be understood not just as individual um, discrimination or bigotry, but as what is ingrained institutionally, um, historically, and epistemologically. At the end of our presentation, a question was raised by an Asian scholar in the audience. Do you mean that parents and school administrators are racist? Wouldn't that be a problematic argument? I gasped. This was a reaction that I had been challenging in my publication, uh, publications for over a decade. But it did not um, seem to have uh, dissipated. This simplistic understanding of racism that uh, relating the issue uh, with racism is inflammatory and it's an uh, um, individual reaction, um, also underpinned the scrutiny of our paper, which eventually forced us not to publish it. How can we transform this narrow understanding of racism but that it's only about individual issues? So uh, we need to think about racism um, 
um, in relation to uh, decolonizing anti-racism and de-essentializing anti-racism, which I just discussed. Um, but within it, um, we need to um, complexify um, the nature of racism. So there's individual racism, um, um, just um, as I experienced with my neighbor and uh, the experience of that third generation Chinese Canadian in the audio excerpt and the taxi driver, right? That's individual basis. But also, uh, racism exists um, inter, uh, institutionally in employment, in education, and other um, social institutions, right? Okay. So um, institutional racism, an example might be um, the imbalance of uh, racial groups in uh, faculty um, and staff students, right? So when I look at um, UBC, the student body is probably 50% visible minority, or more maybe, but then when we look at um, teaching staff, um, probably 80% um, white, right? So um, there's a disparity there, um, and the university doesn't systematically collect data about uh, racial background of um, student, students and faculty members. Um, actually, when I moved to UBC in 2009, um, I was asked by my friends, um, what is it like at UBC? Um, what kind of um, faculty members do you have? Do you have many Asian faculty members? And I didn't know. So I looked for the information on the web um, I couldn't find any information, so I finally found, found this office and I emailed um, this office and I got this response. Um, uh, we don't collect that kind of data, uh, we're different from the U.S. and um, collecting such uh, data would be controversial. And <laughs> but um, if we don't have data, um, how can we advocate for more racial diversity of faculty members, right? So um, we need to um, really think about um, in institutional um, racism. And also uh, racism exists at the epistemological level uh, in the sense that um, school curriculum, um, the content of the subject areas, uh, what we teach, are really um, West-oriented, Eurocentric, right? Okay, so that's at the knowledge level. So um, when we think about um, language, um, one uh, language ideology um, might be the um, uh, the um, legitimate um, language speaker um, as a native speaker of. English or French, um, which is also racialized. So um, at the um, individual level, um, legitimate English speakers look white. Um, this reflects the um, comments made by the taxi driver. And maybe that's the image that um, my neighbor has. And then at the institutional level, um, students of color are institutionally labeled as lacking English proficiency and need to replace their language with um, their own language with English. And at the epistemological level, school curriculum privileges um, Euro European knowledge, Eurocentric knowledge, um, which further promotes assimilation of um, people of color and indig indigenous people. And so um, we really need to desimplify um, anti-racism by um, looking beyond racism as an individual matter. Okay. So finally, um, desilencing anti-racism. Okay. So e 